Maxi for golf. Uber, Uber for golf. <laughs> Caffeine machine. Whatever I take today, don't listen Ignore. to it. Ignore it completely. Well, guys just a quick one from me thank you for tuning in and um, before you go any further please remember to give us a like and a subscribe if you like what you see and you're enjoying the content that we're making we are in the process of making car my dad a 100 percent non-for-profit charity your likes and subscriptions can go a real way to making a real difference in people's lives so if you like what you see give me a thumbs up hit that subscribe button share the word and i look forward to seeing you guys soon guys if you like what you see please remember to like and subscribe to my channel Woo! Ha <laughs> ha Here we go. Right. You are on live TV. Don't say f off. Get rated R. Set up, put it on the dark web like you're in the video. We're <laughs> <laughs> not there about this. No, we don't know. Yeah, yeah, okay, no, 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 We're no, not no, for yeah. the YouTube channel. Okay. Red tube thing. Yeah, yeah. Red <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. Hey, everyone. Is that 10 Radio 4 off? It's a bit <laughs> highbrow, isn't it? So. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Car Mad Dad and John Hildred's Audi R8 V10. So it's a 2000 and. 12, well, I believe. John's owned it from new. It's done 17,937 to be precise. To be precise. We're on the way to Caffeine Machine to give this a bit of a test drive and to find out a bit about John and the car. I've got a list of questions in a sort of this is your lifestyle. I haven't got a da, 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 da. That's, That was the theme tune, wasn't it? That was the theme tune. Yeah. I haven't got a fancy folder or there's no guests. Oh, for the love of God. Next time we'll do guests. Who is John Hildred? Wow. So I first came across John via social media. John has... We're still on Red Tube here. We're still on Red Tube. <laughs> <laughs> One of my friends told me about a guy in Worcester who um, had a really nice Audi RS5. This guy was a very successful businessman, worked very hard, he liked his car. So it was the first RS5 that we'd seen. How long ago was this? That would have been about 2011, I think. Okay, and I think I'm right in saying, unfortunately, that car was stolen. Yes, so that's that. this car came about because of that car. Okay, all right, is... so interestingly, yeah. nice tie in there. And so many moons later, I was at the Chateau Imney Hill Climb. There was a collection of cars there, supercars there. One of those was a Aston Martin AMR V12. And one of my friends who I was with said, oh, that's John Hildred's car. And then sort of started following with, with interest. And it turned out that John owns lots of very nice, I would argue very collectible cars. And you should look at his social media because it is 50% cars and 50% hilarity. Yeah. If you want to find him, I'll put the link on, link on the uh, on the bottom of the description. It's British. John's got an amazing car collection that's well worth a look. He's always doing something with them, and it's a real hoot to follow. So give him a look, give him a like. So I think I would summarise you as a easygoing, don't take yourself too seriously, albeit very serious car enthusiast. I don't need to say anymore. I'm, I'm, Sla I'm happy yeah, with that. Yeah, slash slash happy family man. Normally people use the term gobshite when and I'm sort of being discussed. I don't think I'd have gone there with that. Mostly because you've agreed to take me out when you're out. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> Can you list for everyone watching your yeah. current garage? This is my first sport super sports car. Um, uh, Aston Martin Vantage V12S, which I replaced last year for a V12 AMR. Uh, Morgans are massive. Morgan enthusiast. And for anyone out there who hasn't driven one, do try one. Uh, I've got a couple of Aeros. I've got an Aero Coupe and an Aero GT. And then just for shits and giggles, uh, a uh, Morgan three-wheeler. Is that's a that's a cracking looking thing. Oh, it's just just it's, it's driving fun. Yeah. Distilled down into three wheels. Yeah. And the biggest laugh out loud driving experience you're ever going to have. Yeah. What do you what do you use as a daily? Uh, an Audi RS6, so the the one with the four-liter twin turbo. Yeah, the AMR is one of a hundred. Your Aero 8 is one of eight. 
the GT is one the of eight. Well, even the coupe is only one of about forty ever made. So wow. I think I think this sort of each end. It, it doesn't. It doesn't. But we were we were saying earlier, you don't see as many R8s as you do Porsche 911s. No, they're not as common as no. as you might expect. Should we go back to the RS5 story? Yeah, that's, that's, a, really, okay. that's a nice story actually. Let's so, go back to the Audi RS5. So, back in the day, I'm just going to turn to Mayor Connor here, because yeah. I think Dale's breathing too hard. <laughs> My first sports car, should we say, was an Audi RS5. I owned that car for about nine months. Someone broke into my house in the middle of the night, unbeknown to me and my wife and children who were asleep at the time, took the car and then went on a six month rampage using it as a getaway car. So oh, okay. it was it's quite infamous. There's actually some really, really good footage from the police helicopter as they chase this thing down. You just see this thing lift its skirt up and go. Yeah. And then the next footage, it's sort of following this with its thermal imaging camera. Yeah. And there's a great bit where he goes off, I think, Junction 12 with the M6, realises there's a stinger at the top of the road, so he doubles back down the deceleration ramp, in the wrong way into traffic, jumps back onto the M6, and as he guns it, it just looks like the two exhausts are like, yeah. these rockets. Right. Yeah, it's cool, but it's not cool. Um, Which we don't condone. We don't on condone. Car Dad. No, we don't no. condone stealing or driving no. the wrong way down no. a deceleration ramp. The whole purpose of the story is at that time, you know, I was working away, you know, trying to, to grow a business. I bought this RS5, it was my first sort of new, first new car I'd ever bought, and it was taken from me, and I was, uh, my insurance basically said, do you want another one? I'm like, no, because I've just been burgled, and I wasn't gonna have a car, I was gonna take the cash, yeah. um, but they were only gonna give me market value. Okay. And if I took a new car, I could have full value back into a, a new car. Right. New financial year, so new dividends, that yep. kind of stuff. I okay. went to town on, on, a, on an R8. Okay. And this is the result of that, of that encounter. Uh, it was incredibly personal. I didn't know whether I'd have any more cars after that, you know. You yep. never know with, with business and life, do you? No. So I thought I was going to make the most of this. And I spec'd it with pretty much everything you can tick on a on a box at the time there so that's why it's incredibly personal to me and I love the car and I don't think I'll ever sell it no uh About this car and spec then so okay. you've said you spec it up to the nines so which, which is apparent when you're saying here I'm, I'm a, it's a nice place to be isn't it yeah, yeah. Sort of, it's, a, it's a really nice place to be yeah but interestingly when audi brought out the r8 it wasn't a very nice car to sit in okay it was quite you know down here for example all the center console was scratchy plastic yeah and horrible yeah the tents came with a bit extra anyway yeah. over the over the v8s but you could option to stick leather over pretty much anything you wanted. And even I went to the to the degree of having leather on the air vents, they're all oh, yeah? leather coated. So, okay, wow. so that was quite a pricey option. Like I say, yeah. you get the carbon um, monoposta, which is this bit that goes around the driver, yeah. the carbon door bits. There was three different options for the door sills. You could either have them, that just said Audi R8, I think you could have them in carbon, yeah. or you could have them carbon illuminated. Right. And so uh, those carbon caps, carbon, Wings, carbon engine bay was a big option. Wow. But, yeah. You know, it, it was like I say, it was just an opportunity for me to go to town at the time, and I just wanted it to be my dream car. I spent a lot of time with Audi exclusive, specking it and getting every little detail. Yeah. Right. And uh, and I, I think it turned out quite nice. Yeah. I, I like it. So ownership experience wise, yeah. what are the best bits about owning the car? It's so easy to drive. It's easy to drive quickly, and when you get in it. It feels easy to drive, you know. It immediately, yeah. it tells you that I'm going to look after you. And uh, hey, so it's an Audi. So it's an Audi Quattro. So everything an Audi Quattro can do, this can do. With a highly powerful super sports car, it's you generally don't want to drive them in bad conditions because you can't extract the performance. Whereas this, it doesn't care unless it's yeah. really icy underfoot, which any car is going to struggle with. Yeah, you know, it, it doesn't care if it's wet or it's damp or it's cold, you know, it's it just sucks it up and you can still use the power. And I think that's the beauty of these V10 normally aspirated engines. While they're relatively high power, they're they're not massively torquey and you're yeah. putting it through four wheels, so you can still just give it the beans and uh, and feel confident in driving it. Yeah. And I'm not a driving god by any way, shape or form, you know. I just enjoy these sports cars and uh, this is the one that gives you the most confidence. And if you were going to say it had a pitfall or the one thing you would change about it, 
exactly that point still you know yeah. it's the fact that it is perhaps so easy to drive and so benign we've had a conversation with the witcher car uh, to film of john's and i was really keen to film the r8 i feel like it's massively understated it's obviously very capable it's a great time <laughs> yeah, right. It's almost like planet. And they're becoming more obtainable now. So as uh, cars depreciate, as they do, go most away. Cars, yeah. Most cars do. That's a very good point. As most cars depreciate, you can go away and buy an Audi R8. Admittedly, the V8 variant, not super high mileage. You can get them with under sixty thousand miles for thirty-five, thirty-six thousand pounds, and that is a bargain. A bargain and an awful lot of car for the money. I'm not saying you should or shouldn't buy one. I think you really should, because but, I don't think they're going to depreciate anymore. Uh, yeah, and it's hard to see them going below. No, and, and... That sort of money. Going back to my collection and why I've got that collection of cars as well, if you notice, other than the RS6, they're all normally aspirated. Yeah. The reason I've went to extremes to buy all those cars uh, in a short space of time was because I'm not going to be able to afford them yeah. in the future. Whilst I appreciate you know, the, the performance gains you can get from turbocharging, they're just not. That. They're not instant throttle response, they're not 9,000 RPM red lines. In my, in my world, and I'm heavily biased, and one of the reasons I didn't buy the new one is because I prefer the old one. Yeah. As cars have progressed, they've added too much to them, especially when you, what you're yeah. trying to get out of a car is a driving experience. Yeah. Even you know, the Artronic box in this, it was, it was heavily criticised. It's actually a, a box out of a racing car, you know, it's an yeah. automated clutch. Yeah. It's a manual gearbox with an automated clutch. So all it's doing is dipping the clutch for you. Yeah. So to me, um, all, all I'm not doing now is pressing a clutch pedal. So I, I automatically assumed, let's say about assuming, don't they? Yeah, it makes an ass out of you and me. I assume that would be double clutch. They couldn't handle the pack in the day when they had these. One of the reasons they used the racing gearbox in the Artronics. DSG. That's is, what I thought it might be. Yeah, but they couldn't handle the power back then. Yeah, okay. So, so if I'd start dropping the gears, you get inertia, you can sort yeah. of feel the. Uh, let's just get past here. She really, really, really moves. You, you treat the throttle like you would do in a manual yeah, gearbox. Manual gearbox. Oh, when people try an Artronic or a single automated clutch uh, gearbox, they go, oh, it's so ancient, oh, but what a dual clutch it doesn't do in my SLS is I drop it three gears. It gives me three gears. Yeah. How have the running costs been? This thing has got a 90 litre tank. 90 litres, yeah, so it's got a really good cruising tank. I think, I think that's a great size tank for a car like this. Yeah. It's doing, on average, some 20 miles to the gallon. Yeah. You know, you're going to get 300 miles out of a tank of fuel, which is a day's driving. Yeah, if you were going out for a cruise, you fill her up. Yep. 300 miles plus? Easily, if you, were, if you were sort of stuck in a high gear and you're cruising along, you could knock 23, 24 miles to the gallon out Okay. Of it. So yeah. 300 miles plus is, is perfectly feasible. Yeah. But the thing is, when you start really making it sing and yeah. revving it, probably drops to 16, 17. But if you compare that to a Golf GTI, that could do yeah. 40 miles to the gallon, yeah. and then you start revving the nuts off it, it drops to 20. Yeah, yeah, of course. You know, you don't lose a lot of efficiency for the performance. Yeah, and if you were going to tax it for the years, you know what it cost? Nearly 600 pounds. Okay. And then servicing? Yeah. Oil change services have been as little as sort of 400 and some pounds, but okay. 300 quid, that was oil. I, if you go to Lamborghini, you go to Ferrari, yeah. You pay for the names. Yes. You are going to be charged a lot of money for, yeah. for next year. Yeah. So you know, my advice is find a specialist and get the f out of there. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. they are going to rinse you. Uh, a lot of the specialists as well are the best engineers out of those yeah. out of those branches yeah, that set up on themselves. They've got a bit of an ounce about them, so yeah. they've, um, they've they've set themselves up. So you get a better service, and they know all the foibles behind these cars. Yeah. And they look after you well with good pricing. Reliability has ever let you down. The only any things issues. I've had were covered under warranty, and I think those were when I bought it. <laughs> there was a spider in the tail light, a dead spider, holding about, this holding about, this holding about, this like corpse of a spider. Yeah. <laughs> um, the, the suspension on these is the early Magnatronic, whatever yes. they call it, Magnarito. Yeah. They, they Magride. Magride, it that, yeah. Magride. Magride, yeah. One of them started squeaking, and they replaced those. They're well known for failing, I think, but it's cost me, I think, a few services, set so, of tyres. The reliability's been good. Very good. It's an Audi. Yeah. It's, that's, that's, that's why if you're going to supercar ownership, I'd say it's a good place to start because... <laughs>
the ride. No, so it's, it's worth pointing out. I it's, think it's exceptionally It rides like a normal sport car. It's quite a square wheelbase, which has its benefits in terms of being quite jinky if you want it yeah. to be. I don't think it's felt like we're in a big car at any stage, you know, driving through no. the town at the moment. Be, Good visibility. Yeah, around you, you know, it's, the it's, ride's not bad. Um, if anything, actually, I would define this as comfortable. I could sit in this for a very long period of time. Absolutely. You know, yeah. So you could tour it, couldn't you? You could, yeah. you could GT it quite easily. easily. It's not overly loud. It's not the quietest car I've ever been in, but it's not loud considering what we're. It's my quietest car. What we're in, sure. yeah. is it? Yeah. Yeah. But this is by far the highest revving car I've got. I think it redlines at something like eight, seven, fifty, and that's just sensational thing to to ring out. And, and it feels like it enjoys it as well, if that makes sense. Yeah, Guys, you start revving rev. them and they're like, no, no, and this just loves it. And it's like, next, please, next, please, next, please, next, please. Yeah. And um, so it's happy to sing. With these, the early R8s as well, they're six speed gearboxes. And with a six speed gearbox comes nice long gears. Yeah. You now, emissions regulations and dual clutches, more gears, lower ratio, so obviously they're changing more often. Yes, you've got a very tall. Seven speed, so it can yeah. theoretically, it's got a higher top end. Yeah. But let me tell you, I've done a few VMAXs, you need miles and miles of, of, of track to get to anywhere near the VMAX of these cars. Yeah. This has done 186 at Bruntingthorpe. My SLS, uh, for argument's sake, a car that's more powerful by about 50 horsepower and God knows how much torque, did yeah. 188. So, no real difference. No. no. Before I get into this, you know, the, the only things you can change is you can go from auto to manual and you can put it in sport. Sport yeah. quickens up the gear shifts, which is needed in fairness. Okay. You know, it gets a bit, in, without sport on, it's a bit lazy. Yeah. Does that um, mean if you were cruising around and you weren't bothered about making pace, you actually could drop it out of all those things and it becomes yeah. just even more so pleasant? I'll just, I'll just, I'll just, I'll do it now. It's in auto now. Yeah. And now all I do is just find the highest gear. Oh, yeah. So it's just, it's just almost like an efficiency mode. Exactly. Yeah. If I put it in sport, it'll find a lower gear. Yeah. These normally aspirated high revving engines, the power is up the rev range. Yes. So it's getting you ready to where the power is, otherwise it'll just. Uh, yeah. Let's not forget as well, this is 10 year old plus technology. It's a sweet spot for me in sort of, in terms of automotive history because yeah. you've got really capable, normally aspirated engines, you haven't got loads of technology in these cars you know you, you can i think we were talking about all the adjustments the other thing that just is the suspension which just makes it harder which is the only thing i would do ever use that is on a track because you've got billiard table yeah. smooth yeah. surfaces and yeah, it stops a little bit of lean uh, and that's it you've got hydraulic power steering so it's really nicely weighted and that's what's nice is that you get in you turn it on i put it into manual put it in sport and that's it and it actually It'd be nice if you'd remembered what you'd left it in. That's probably the worst criticism I can give. Yeah, that's yeah. the most damning thing you can say about a car after a good eight years ownership. I think that says a lot. And you've yeah. got cruise. We've driven to Cafe Machine on a sat nav. The, when the V10s were released, it was the first time a car had 100% LED lights. Well, okay. The R R8 V10 was that that first car. What are you doing, you absolute tool? Oh, yeah. it's, a, it's going to the ploughing match. Yeah. There is an actual annual ploughing match. Yeah. Oh, let's go. Let's do, it. Do, do you know, no matter what anybody ever says about a car, don't listen to it. Whatever I tell you today, don't listen Ignore. to it. Ignore it completely it's because good. your experience is different to my experience, it's different to somebody else's experience. Yeah. And it might just be the car for you. I love it when you get in a new car and don't have any preconception as to what to expect yeah. and then it, then go, actually that really surprised me. Yeah. You know, And I can think of a number of cars that I've got in and thought, that was I'm really disappointed yeah. in that. Is. My most recent example of that, it's a really good one, was a Suzuki Swift Sport. What a car. Yeah. What a little And you hear that quite hoot. a lot actually. What, yeah, it's just fun. It's, it's yeah. eager to please row around and have a bit of fun with well built Japanese reliable yeah. little hot hatches that doesn't cost you the earth to run. We are at the Haven. Okay.